My first time up there, it just looked like a sea of mountains. Most people, if they thought of Alaska at all, thought of it as a cold, rugged wasteland of little value except for its gold, fur, and fishery. Now, suddenly, it seemed to have considerable additional value. And even on the drive-in, you kind of are going through Thompson Pass and you see the wind blowing on the road and the mountains just going straight up to the sky. And it's one of the most beautiful sights you can see. Jamie Anderson, myself, Austin Sweeten, Eric Jackson, and Robin Van Jen all wound up in Alaska. We actually went to Alaska Backcountry Guides for my first trip. But I remember the first time up on a ridge of a run called Honey Hole, just looking around and seriously it was like mountains as far as as far as the eye could see and I was so just captivated by it and I knew on that trip my tripod was shaky, my drone didn't show up. There were definitely like a lot of things that I learned that I was able to kind of like take with me into my following years. I actually think it was 2021 it was the first year I was up there with Jamie 2022, I got to do the natural selection out at the Tordrillos and got to camp out there. And then 23, I was able to go back up with Tor Gear, Judd, Brandon Davis, and Stale. And we got to kind of work for the first time as our own crew. Now 24, this was my fourth time up here and I kind of bounced around a little bit. I did a little bit of time in Valdez, went over to Palmer, and uh, wound up in hands with a lot of the monster crew. I, this video, I really wanna help shine some light on kind of what Alaska's like, what it's about, and especially from like the client experience because it's a lot different when I come up here with professional snowboarders and we're kind of going to film lines and like look at all that, all the gnarly stuff you see in the movies. But on a client side of things, you know, there's so many like blue, green, black runs that um, you wouldn't really look at to go film snowboarding. But from a normal snowboarder or skier perspective, there's some of the most eye-opening, glorious, life-changing runs I think that any skier or snowboarder dreams of. It's the gnarliest run of my life. What I've learned through my years up here is that Alaska Backcountry Guides has one of the most high-end, top-notch, just professional experiences that I think is one of the most well-rounded for any skier or snowboarder that's looking to kind of dip their toes into Alaska. They kind of operate on a more semi-private and private program which in layman's terms, that means semi-private, you basically have two loads with one helicopter. In private, you can either opt to do one load of three, or you can do a pack of seven, because there needs to be two guides with you no matter what. So if you're running one load, that's gonna be two guides and three clients. And if you're running a semi-private, that's gonna be one guide with four people, and then one guide with four people. So in total, you can bring eight people on your trip. But what I really like about Alaska Backcountry Guides over some of the other operations is due to the fact that they do run kind of on a semi-private, private program, it's so catered to your riding experience throughout the week. Everything from like the morning, you show up and there's coffee and breakfast and and Sally packs everybody's lunches. The dinners, when you get back from the hangar, it's just so high end, and everything is kind of bundled up into like a really rad package that I think, you know, for a lot of people, they save up years for this type of experience. And Alaska is a place that you might not, you might show up, pay the money, and you might not be riding the whole week. So it's really important to be with an operation that's gonna provide a good experience whether you ride or not. Just the professionalism all around, from their state-of-the-art hangar, the beautifully maintained helicopters, mechanics on site, to the pastry chef Sally, who cooks some of the best pastries, which I will say this is like one of my highlights because it really does feel like you're in Europe. You have breakfast pastries, all the bread, you know, at dinner, you got snacks, desserts, everything is like, 
so amazing and it just kind of elevates what's already an insane experience from a riding standpoint. And it really feels like a small family there. And that's uh, definitely one of the things that's like kept me coming back to ABG. Back in April, I got to go up there as a client. I think one of the most important things when planning an AK trip is definitely to be honest about your ability because the guides kind of place people in groups depending on everybody's ability. And I think maybe one of the most frustrating things for people can be if if someone's at a higher level and they have a slower person in their group, you can only really go to the terrain that suits that, that lowest level person. There's cheaper options and more expensive options and I feel like ABG's price point is like right in the middle where, you know, if you're looking for a trip of a lifetime, they kind of check all the boxes. One of the things that I've noticed is I've kind of been to a few different heli operations and especially up in Alaska is like on your first day out everyone wants to get after it and go over like go for the gnarliest runs they can. Don't be alarmed if the first couple runs are a little bit more mellow than you think and the number one thing I've learned whenever you're operating with a guide is listen to the guide. If they say stay in the tracks, stay in the tracks because those first couple runs, they're really testing the whole group and seeing how well they listen. And the better you listen, the better terrain that guide is gonna let you guys ride. If you see something on those first couple runs that you really wanna ride, point it out to your guide, let them know what you're looking for, and they're gonna do their best, depending on the snow stability, weather, and safety to put you guys on those runs. One of the raddest things is when you walk in, they have lockers for everybody. You have all your harnesses, your backpacks. There's a wax bench where, you know, every day if you want, you can wax your snowboard or skis. They have a dining room up top and a little lounge area. And it really feels like a, kind of like a rad little, just like man cave, girl cave, whatever you want to call it but hangout zone where the helicopters are right there. You can kind of, and this is like, you know, something that, that I noticed that all the clients, you know, they, for a lot of people, they're not around helicopters that much and just kind of getting to be near them and see them and go through the briefing and really just understand the machine and start to feel comfortable with the machine. On a typical day at ABG, they have two state-of-the-art helicopters for both of those groups. The private usually goes out first with the semi-private going out second. So usually when one group goes out, the second group is kind of waiting by the side of the hangar. Everybody does their beacon check before they get in the helicopter. Once you're out in the field, you usually get about, depending on weather, three to four to five runs before you do a lunch break and then kind of end the day with four to five runs. So I would say on a normal day, you're looking at six to eight runs. And then if it's stellar bluebird the entire time, you can really crack up into that like eight to 12 range. But I think on our biggest day, we got 11 days out there and it was pretty much as stellar conditions as you can get. If you don't get to go snowboarding or skiing, you're actually, there's glaciers that you can go walk through, which are some of the, like the raddest, coolest ice structures that have been there for millions of years. You can go drive up to Thompson Pass or around the bend towards the other side of LDs that the airport's on. And you can kind of go touring, you know, go ski around like small little like tree runs or whatever the visibility is allowing. If you want, you can, you know, organize yourself to go on a boat and I'm sure ABG could help with that if you voiced that concern that you wanted to. And just like the all around scenery up there in Valdez is like the big difference from like Haines, for instance, is the mountains are so big. So when you do get in the air, it seriously feels like an endless sea of mountains. They just go on forever. And there's some of the most beautiful scenes that I've really gotten to witness in my life. I would say as far as skiing and snowboarding goes, the length of the runs that you do get to do, it just beats anything in the world. Like it straight up is some of the most top to bottom, three, 4,000 vertical runs that I didn't really even know existed until this last trip up there. 
because when we're usually looking to film, it's kind of on a shorter section or a shorter pitch of the run. But there were definitely runs where from top to bottom, you know, it's like five minutes of snowboarding down later and you're not stopping, just going to the bottom. And it goes forever. You know, if, if you're thinking, oh, I'm an intermediate, low-end, advanced skier, snowboarder, and I don't really know, Alaska seems kind of gnarly. I think, you know, you can tell by the, you know, these POVs that I'm showing you, it's not always the most crazy runs and there's always good terrain out there. And the fact of the matter is, is even though what you might see in the movies we make is like the gnarly, steep, cliffed out, exposed runs, what is available to the clients just as far as ski runs go is, you know, some of the most wide open, paneled, just open bowls and gullies that are just so fun to ride down. And I think there's something for everybody up in Alaska. And uh, it's not just the, the expert skiers and riders that are able to take advantage up there. There's definitely a lot more options for the intermediate and advanced snowboarders or skiers than you might think. As far as accommodation goes, I believe most of the time ABG tries to book at the Totem Hotel, which is kind of the newer hotel in town. And then occasionally, depending on availability, uh, clients are put in houses, or if you come with the private ship, I believe they have one house that your whole crew can be in. But I do think that of all the different little towns in Alaska that I've been to, Valdez, it's not a huge town, but there's definitely the most options for food of the other places I've been to. And it's just so beautiful out on the river. There's so much wildlife and eagles and otters and just different sights to see. And for someone's first time up there, it's definitely a life-changing experience. And there's a lot, there's a lot to get done in that week, especially on the down days. So I wouldn't be too scared of, you know, Alaska's weather and not being able to ride because regardless, if you're up there with a good crew and you're looking to ride some of the best lines in the world, you're gonna have a good time. If there's any questions about Alaska, or Alaska Backcountry Guides in specific, please leave it in the comments. I'm super down to help kind of guide people into their first experiences up there. It's something that's always been on my bucket list. When I was 14, I wrote on my bucket list that I wanted to go to Alaska and heli ski. And kind of getting to do that for the first time last April was seriously one of the highlights of my life. And I definitely recommend everyone who's passionate about skiing or snowboarding to at least give it a shot once in their life because if you are a capable rider or skier you are gonna have one of the best weeks that you can possibly have on a piece of wood going down a mountain.